was I kind to a person that seems to always annoy me? Mm -hmm. These are the kind of questions we don't like to answer. Did I give a hand up to someone less fortunate, or did I say, they don't deserve it? You see the way they live? That's easy to say. Sometimes it's much harder to do those things. And sometimes it's even hard to see those things that we need to do. Here's another one. Did I attend worship and Bible study as I should? You know, when we're not growing in the love of the Lord, there's an old saying, and I've probably said this before, you've probably heard me say, when you're not growing, you're rotten. You know, a banana, when they take it off the tree, or off the pot or whatever, begins to become overripe very quickly. And that's what happens to us. It begins to die. And that's what happens to us when we remove ourselves from the vine of Christ. If you're detached from the vine, you will die. And the only way to stay attached to that vine is through the Word. And if we're not doing Bible study and we're not going to worship on Sunday mornings, slowly but, but surely, <clears throat> We're dying spiritually. Did I give a word of encouragement to someone? Was I faithful to time, my time and my money? The Bible says all things. The time part is the tough part. Sometimes we can't take an hour on Sunday morning to come to church. Sometimes we can't take an hour on Wednesday evening. And believe it or not, Bible study can be fun. Some of you, some of you that go to our Bible study know that. That's only a couple hours a week the way I see it. And I'm not going to go into the numbers of how many hours you have a week or how many hours, you, minutes, or whatever. I didn't look those things up, but I know it's a lot. And, and if we're just too busy to do those things, then eventually we are dying a slow death spiritually. It's one of the most important things you'll do for yourself is to go to Bible study and go to worship. It's almost like I'm preaching to the choir this morning because you're here. In 2017, as we look ahead to this new year, what am I going to purposely do in the new year? Am I going to purpose to look for ways to further the cause of Christ? Or am I just going to keep on doing the same old thing because I was real comfortable with that last year? Well, let me tell you, if you're comfortable with it, it's probably not enough. Probably not doing enough. Jesus gave his all for me. And for you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Can't I give two hours a week? Can't I give five hours a week? Maybe ten? I know some of you give a lot of time, and some of you give none. But I'm not here to point fingers at anybody, because I know I don't do enough. To love with unconditional love as Jesus loved me, even those who are not easy to love. A 
that everybody knows something's not real easy to love. Sometimes I'm not real easy to love. Jesus doesn't like everything I do, and I know that. But he still loves me with that unconditional love that we cannot wrap our minds around. We need to really practice that. Practice the unconditional love that Christ has for us. Number three, <clears throat> To give someone a hand up when they need it and pay it forward. I think around Christmas time, we do a lot more of that because it seems like that's a season to be jolly and that's a season to be nice. But some of us are naughty. Some of us don't always do those nice things. I purpose to support the mission work of the local church near, far, around the world. The Bible says to go out into all the world, not just your neighborhood, not just Pittsburgh or New York or wherever. It says all the world. Number five. I purpose to support and give a word of encouragement whenever I can. And that means we look for places and people to encourage and to show the love of Christ. This might be tough for you, this one. I purpose to attend worship and Bible study each week, Monday or Wednesday or whenever it is. Like I said before, believe it or not, Bible study can be fun. Not one of us has hit the mark. That's why Christ died for us. So that we can be forgiven for those things that we have not done. And for the things that we have done. So don't be discouraged if you found out there were a lot of things on this list that you need to do better. Because every one of us here can do something on that list better. thing of it is, my Jesus knows me better than anybody. He knows the things I do wrong. He knows the things I do right. He knows the things that I didn't do that I should have done, and I know it, I should have done. He knows that too. He's there to forgive us for those things that we don't, that we miss the mark on. And I thank God for that. But we can always do better. There's a little prayer that Jabez prayed. It's in the uh, First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 10. Now this prayer, there's very little in Scripture about Jabez. But this prayer seemed pretty important, so it was put in there for a reason. And you know, sometimes we don't know what to do to help somebody or what to do in missions or whatever. But he had the perfect prayer for this. He said, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me 
and that you would keep me from evil, and that I may not cause pain. I think that's a sweet prayer. So there are ways. If you pray that, pray that prayer, I'm sure you'll find out that there are things that you can do that you never thought about before. He says, enlarge my territory. In other words, what he's saying here is, give me somebody to witness to. Give me somebody to, to help. And this, this other part, too, is great. That you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Father, help us to do better in 2017. For we know that when we don't grow in you, we will die a slow spiritual death. Help us to grow in your spirit, that we might be more alive every day. Bless each one throughout this year. Keep us healthy and in your care. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Okay. Our closing hymn is 117.